Today I want to show you an extremely powerful integration trick that's going to allow us to solve integrals like this one. Now, this function is extremely important in calculus. I've made a previous video, for instance, about how sine x divided by x, the limit of that is x goes to zero, is the most important limit in calculus. But notice that we can't solve the integral of it via any of the normal tools from first year calculus. Parts, partial fractions, substitutions, things like that. The graph of sine of x divided by x, by the way, it looks like this. The one over x part means that as x gets very large, it basically goes down to zero. And this is gonna be the key reason to why this integral is gonna end up converging. The software that I'm using, by the way, is called Maple Learn, and they are the sponsor of today's video. More about them at the end. The way the trick works is it starts by taking this integral and making it actually a little bit messier. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to input a factor e to the minus s times x. I'll tell you why in a moment, but for now just note that for every different value of s, this integral, if it converges, is gonna give a different value. So what we really have is a function of s. So I'll just call this f of s. Every different s value gives a different value of the integral. It is a function. But what's relevant for our purposes is that if you were to plug in s equal to zero, then you just get exactly what we started. E to the zero would be one and you'd have sine x divided by x, the integrand we care about. So if I can solve this family of integrals, I'll certainly solve the integral we care about, but it still seems a lot messier. So I have to argue, why is this better? Well, what I'm next gonna do is take the derivative of the function f of s with respect to s, the derivative with respect to s. And that derivative, when I take it inside of the integral, becomes a partial derivative. There's the variable s, there's the variable x. I'm taking the derivative with respect to s. I'll give myself some more space and notice how wonderful this is. Now when I take the derivative with respect to s, it pops out a factor of x out the front. The factor of x cancels with the x that was down on the bottom. And now I get just an exponential times a sine term. This trick where you introduce this parameter and you take the derivative with respect to that parameter is referred to as Feynman's trick and it can be helpful for a whole class of integrals. You also might recognize if you're somebody who knows Laplace transforms and I have a playlist on that, I'll, I'll put a link down in the description, that this is nothing but the Laplace transform of sine x divided by x. And so with some experience, this e to the minus sx business doesn't seem quite so crazy and left field as it, as it might right at the very beginning. But nevertheless, the trick has worked. I have an integral that is something that's just much easier. There's no weird thing in the denominator. Actually, this integral I would give to my first year calculus students if they're doing integration by parts. This is just an integration by parts twice integral. I'll do it very quickly for you. I'll set u to be the exponential and dv to be sine of x dx. I then can use the uv minus v du integration by parts formula to get this expression at the bottom. For the first term, if I plug infinity, the negative exponential makes it goes away. If I plug in zero, then I'm just left with cos of zero, which is one. And so all I have is a minus one out the front. But the integral is actually not that much easier. It's still an exponential times, well, a cosine term now. But oh, watch what happens. I'm gonna have to do this integration by parts twice. I'm gonna do a new integration by parts on this. U is gonna be the exponential and dv is gonna be with a cosine of x dx. Integration by parts, once again, gives me the formula uv minus v du. For the term out the front, when you take the limit as it goes to infinity, it's gonna to go to zero. When you plug in zero, sine of zero is zero. So the whole thing out the front is just gonna be zero. I've also pulled out the s squared, which according to our integrals is just a constant. I mean, we know it's a variable, but for an integral with respect to x, it's just a constant. So it comes out the front. And then what I have, well, you should recognize this. This is what I started with. We're, we're right back to where we began. Well, up to a difference of a negative sign. So this is a standard integration by parts twice trick when you've got sort of sines and cosines going on where you do two integration by parts and you get back to what you started with. So this just lets me put in negative f prime of s in place of this big long integral. I just get negative one minus s squared f prime of s. Okay, well, let's simplify everything and put it back together. I'll move the f prime terms all to one side. I'll divide out, and what do I get? The derivative with respect to s is negative one over one plus s squared. Now, what we were interested in was 
f of s, and particularly f of zero. What I have right now is the derivative of f. So in order to get to f, I'm going to have to integrate. So integrating, I get negative arctangent of s plus c. This is one of those ones you just have to recall that the derivative of arctan is one over one plus s squared. So I just recognize this as one of the ones that I know. But this isn't the only thing I know about f of s. I also had its definition. We defined it to be, well, this particular integral. Now, the real challenge here is I need to figure out what is that plus c? Negative arctan of s I understand well, but what is that plus c? We know eventually I'm gonna be interested in the value when s is equal to zero. But to figure out the value of c, I wanna take the limit as s goes to infinity, because this is gonna be something that I can compute. So, okay, so I have two different limits to do. Now, if I do the integral first, well, the negative exponential is something that's gonna drag down to zero as s goes to infinity. This is an e to the minus s. So you have to imagine an e to the minus infinity. You don't have to worry about sine of x divided by x. The largest value that's ever gonna be is one. In fact, it gets much smaller than that. And then if you just do the improper integral of e to the minus sx and take the limit of that as s goes to infinity, it goes to zero. So this whole thing indeed goes to zero. We can also plot this negative exponential times sine of x divided by x. And as you see, as we increase the value of s, it goes to zero extremely quickly. The other thing that was gonna be relevant for me was arctan. Let's just quickly plot what arctan looks like. And you'll notice that off to the right, it has a horizontal asymptote of pi divided out by two. So going back to our computation, the limit of the arctan of s as s goes to infinity, that's just gonna be pi over two. So putting all that together, I'm just getting the value that c is pi over two since negative pi over two plus pi over two is equal to zero. So we solved for that constant, we're almost done. So what I've been able to show is that the integral we've been studying is equal to negative arctan of s plus pi divided by two. And finally, finally, I am at a spot where I can actually just evaluate what this is going to be when I plug in s equal to zero. Reviewing arctan one more time, arctan of zero is just zero. And so I get the final answer that the integral from zero to infinity of sine x divided by x, what happens when you plug in s equal to zero, is just equal to pi divided by two. This is the Dirichlet integral. I do want to take just a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is MapleLearn that I've sort of been integrating throughout this video. MapleLearn is this really great product for learning and teaching of mathematics. You can make all sorts of mathematical documents where you can do the math directly in the document. You can evaluate an integral, take a derivative, you know, invert a matrix, whatever it is that you want to do. The software sort of intelligently interprets what it is that you're typing and then gives a contextual menu of options of standard types of computations that you might want to do with whatever you've expressed. So I hope you check out Maple Learn with the link in the description. If you have any questions about this video, put them down in the comments below and we'll do some more math in the next video.